All right, guys, welcome to today's video. I'm super excited about today's spotlight interview. We are talking to Mike Henniger. Am I pronouncing your last name right? Yeah. Mike yeah. Henniger, and he is an enrolled agent by the Internal Revenue Service. Um, he's a superstar accountant. And so we're going to walk through his journey before he started with me and working uh, with the Tax and County Clients on Demand program and where he is now. After work with me for about, I think it's been a what, like, Six months, Mike, since you've joined. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, probably a little under six months. Um, I think you might have picked up sometime in July. I'm thinking. Yeah, it might have been around then. Yeah, okay. it took me a while. It took me a little while. It took you a little to while to put a trip. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about that. So let's talk about just um, you know, go ahead and formally introduce everybody. Um, let them know like who you are, what you do, how long you've been in business. Uh, my name's uh, Mike Henninger. I'm an enroll agent. Um, I'm also a pro advisor with QuickBooks. Um. I've been, I've been an accountant since 1997, um, aging myself. I, I, was, uh, I was in the military from like 94 to 97, um, working full time, going to school full time at night, studying until like two in the morning and then just doing that until I was done. Then when I was done, uh, I got, a, I got a, some corporate jobs. I was a manager of accounting for a software company till about um, 2003. Yeah, from t till about 2003. Um, and I was just, I knew early on that I had to be on my own at some point. Um, I always, I, I kind of had this itch in my head that like there, there's employees and there are, there are entrepreneurs. Like neither one is better than the other, but neither one can be the other. You know, like you can't, if you're an employee and you love that, that stability, that's cool. But if you're an entrepreneur, you, that, that's like a cage. And that's, I was, I felt like I was in a cage most of my life. So in 2003, I kind of went out on my own with nothing, no idea what I was doing. Um, I didn't have my enrolled agent yet. I didn't have a, anything. I was just, I figured, yeah, whatever. I'll just go out and work with, for some CPAs that I know. And that worked for a little while. Um, I started my own company soon after that. And I've essentially been, after 2003, I had a few jobs in between to kind of like, what am I doing? Do I really want to do this? Do I not want to do this? And then uh, there was a point where I just said, I. I can't, I can't do it anymore. Um, I was doing some work with a school district and it was, a, it was a sweet job. Like it, as far as like employee per, like an employee minded person, it was a cakewalk job. Like every, you know, six figures, like all this kind of stuff. And I, I, my boss at the time who, who he should, he, I didn't think he should have been allowed to, to visit the business office yet. He was running it. Right. <laughs> but he came in and I was like, I was like, man, I can't, I just can't do this anymore. I got to give you my two weeks. And I, I jumped with nothing again, with nothing. And, um, so it, for a while it, I, I kind of spun my wheels a little bit to try to figure out what I was doing. But, um, you know, I, I, I had clients, uh, I was, you know, getting by, um, but it just never, you know, up until I kind of started seeing what you were doing, I just never felt like I had any real momentum, like no, no real plan on how to build anything. I didn't, I didn't really know what was, what, what was possible with this kind of business. I, I, I think I had, I had a lot of lower expectations, to be honest with you. I thought it was just going to be a grind of just like paperwork, paperwork, paperwork the rest of my life. Right. But I, but I, but I knew I couldn't go back to being an employee. You know, it was just, it was a, it, it was a bittersweet on both sides because I just didn't know what to do. Right, right. Yeah. And I, I think we've all been there where you're like, ah, do I go back and get this job? It's kind of like you're in limbo. you like, I need the money. I want to work, but yeah. I do not want to work for somebody else. You right. know, it is a difference once you kind of get a taste of like the entrepreneurial, even though we have many bosses, like, right, like our clients, yeah. we, yeah. we have many bosses <laughs> that we mm -hmm. report to. Um, yeah. But it's still kind of like on our own time. It's like our yeah. own authority and you can hire and fire these bosses mm -hmm. whenever you please. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's weird. I remember when I, when I, when I did that, the, 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 my last day, the next day after I had just left completely, I remember it was a feeling like I had just jumped off a, off a cliff without a parachute and I had to figure it out on the way down. You right. know, but, that, but I learned to enjoy that feeling. Like that really made, it molded me. You know, like I really... I really kind of fell into that. That that feeling is a good feeling. It's not. It's not as scary as you think it's going to be. Yeah. So I'm. I'm pretty sure you. You were able to build up your business to sustain your lifestyle, right? So let's talk mm -hmm. about that. Like, what were you, or how many clients were you able to build your business to, and how much did that look like in revenue with taxes and accounting? Prior to here, prior to working with you, um, it was. It was not. It was not what you'd think. It was. It was maybe 60-ish 
Like, you know, it would, but, but it was, I had to free, like my whole thing is freedom. That's what I, I, I was all about. Like I, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, doing anything. I was just living, you know, basically surviving. I, you know, I, I had no alarm clocks, you know, that was like a big goal. Um, but it was not, I didn't, I, I knew I was capable of more, but I didn't know, I just didn't know how to, how to get there. Like I, I almost had like this limiting belief thing where, man, maybe this is all I'm going to, I can do. Maybe I, cause I, 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 I just felt so, so thin, like, like a mile wide and, and an inch deep because I was taking on anything. You know, I had no, I had no plan behind it. Um, what was your pricing structure like? Uh, low. It, it, it was, it was weak. I, I, I was probably, um, my dogs just entered the room by the way. So in case you hear them, okay. um, uh, there was no, there was no system behind it. It was like, okay, I think I'll charge this guy this much and I'll charge that company over there that much. Uh, but there was nothing, there was no logic behind it gotcha. because I didn't, I didn't really value what I was doing. It was just a matter of what, what do I think they'll be okay with. Got you. Okay. And did you have a niche that you were specializing in before we worked together or did you have like some sort of set service offerings, whether it's a service or anything um, that you were kind of working with? I always wanted recurring revenue, but I somehow I always fell into tax. Like I always just had a bunch of tax re returns to do. Um, you know, so, so the niche that I wanted to get into was always real estate and construction. Cause I always, I used to flip houses and you know, that that's kind of, I lived off of that, you know, while I was trying to do all this. Um, but, but it was, I've always had, because it was something that I was doing anyway, like I had a lot of contacts in the industry. So I felt like it was just a natural, natural fit plus like I kind of enjoy and, and I, I that's when I started thinking like I, I don't want to be this a mile wide and inch deep thing because you can't be an expert in every in every industry like it's easier just to focus on one or two and, and be the expert there right right got you got you okay so let's talk about after you joined you know what, what would you say was the biggest like aha moment for you after we started working together um well, I think I might have said this when we the first time we spoke was it was like I, I would be prior to us working together, I, I was hit up like maybe once or twice a week by somebody who could get me high quality accounting clients, quote unquote. Right. And then I would go and look them up and they were like, you know, they had no accounting experience whatsoever. They had never done what they're going to teach me how to do. Right. But that's what I liked about you. You did it. You know, you went through all this crap that, that we're, you know, we're doing before we start working with you. And it, it, um, so I like that number one, and but I think what was different was you you helped me see that it wasn't just a sixty to seventy five thousand dollar a year, you know, fight every year. You know, like it was something that actually had exponential uh, ability, possibilities, right? Um, that getting rid of those lim limiting beliefs was what was one of the, the key things that I've gotten from the program. And it, it and I know we, we talk more about like. Uh, logistically do this, do this, do this, do this. But that mindset thing for me, for the way I am, my mindset, mindset is, is if I have my mind right, the sky's the limit. Right. Got you. Got you. So let's talk about, um, cause I know you, you were kind of debating on what niches you can go into. Cause you have such a, just a you, wide array of, experience. you can say it, you can say it. I'm no. a, I'm, a, I'm a niche offer. I'm a niche. I never heard that until I went through the videos. I'm, but that's what I that's what I was doing. Like, okay, should I do this? Should I do that? Um, I'm kind of I, I I have two two niches. Like one is more like I feel like I have a, a connection to like veteran business owners. That that's something that the more I think about it, I think that's going to be more like a nonprofit kind of thing. Like I'm just going to kind of donate time in that direction to help. Uh, veteran business owners get their get their stuff together, get their books set up, all that kind of stuff. But the the the, the business niche that I'm going to do is is real estate and construction. I'm 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 sticking to that. Okay, gotcha. Because I be and and it kind of ties into like that whole my mentality of of unlimited thinking. Like I'm just I feel to be that I'm getting a, a, I'm attracting these kind of clients, like big clients. So it's working out. So let me ask you that because I'm I'm curious to know. Um, exactly how you've been able to attract the clients that you've been attracting you've been posting in like the facebook group like these big deals right yeah, like like, yeah. like you are like the the holy mecca like like you're the mvp in the group because like and I, I don't like they're not gonna believe me they're not gonna believe this crap I know, I, know. I know 
but I'm like the I am the I never like I am not a, a brag kind of person. Like I'm like very just focused on doing the work. But I I want people to know it's possible. You know, like I because it, it, it just blows my mind that this is happening. Yeah. So, so talk about that. Like like well, some I I have I have these I, I because of all the the different things that I've I've been involved in, like the different trying this and trying that and trying that in, in this industry. Um, I, I've had a lot of, I've, I've been lucky enough to meet some good people throughout the years. And uh, one of them is a guy who's a, who's a big financial planner in the area. He, he was with a, a partner, a few other guys, they've split up, he went on his own. And um, he's really just, just taken over the world in a good way. And he, he has a, a great heart, like the, the, this, he and, the, and his, his uh, president of the company have such good hearts. They are genu they're genuinely client focused. Client, whatever is in, in the, the, the best interest of the client, they, they want to do. But they, they're sort of like the quarterback, right? So they help the client with all these different things, tax being one of them. So the one day he, the CEO he hit me up on LinkedIn and he was like, hey, you want to come in and talk? We'll, we'd like to see if you want to handle our tax, our tax practice. And I just love their vision. Like I didn't know where it was going to go. I didn't know. Like, the one thing I, I, because it was before you and I got the, you know, you and I got together and started working. And so I was, I'm terrible at marketing. Like I'm just, it's not my thing. Like I am not a, hey, what are you doing? Let's, you know, let's get together. Like, I, I hate that shit. Like I'm just not that guy, right? But I see that there's value to it. I have to get comfortable with it. But they're great at it. Like they are. They're great at it. So I figured, okay, I'm a workhorse. That's cool. They're marketing geniuses. That's cool. This could be a great thing. So um, that's how I got in with them. And uh, so I, I'm, I handle their tax practice. That's been growing. Um, and I have other relationships with them that, that kind of like put me in position with these other, these other new accounts that I've gotten that are just, I, I just can't believe where, where things have gotten. But it was all because I started believing it was possible because you showed me that. You show me that it's, we don't have to be stuck making three, four grand a month. You can do 10 times that. Right. You know, and it's, it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing when you um, just remove those blinders. So of what's what, your, your highest engagement right now? The most? I have, right now I have, I have one client that is, how are we doing? Probably between 90 and 105,000. For 2020. Wow. And yeah. Is that in the country? And that's, that's, yeah, that's, um, that's outsource CFO work that I'm doing for them. Wow. Okay. Got you. And I think you just posted about another big client in the group, just recently, like a day. Yeah. Or there is, a, there's a, 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 a client that uh, I've been working on for a year that he's got, he's got some, he's got some problems that um, yeah. need, need to be fixed. And that's but, that. But can you go through like just like that mindset piece where you were like, you know, I, I wanted it, I wanted it. And as soon as I kind of like <laughs> let it go, it was kind of like this. It was like the resistance, like you released some sort of resistance when it came to getting clients. And as soon as you released that resistance, it just fell in your lap. Can you just um, go through like the mindset of what you were going through, what that was like? Well, I think I, well, I think what I posted um, this this week about that was that I had just I had. Uh, I, I got a call from some company in Philly. Like, I don't know how they found me, but they found me. And they had a mess. They had a, like, I, I, I attract clients that have a big mess. You know? <laughs> and th this, this was a, like a mechanic shop or something. And so I met with them like a month ago. And I, I told them exactly what I was going to do for them, what they wanted to eat, make sure I understood what they needed. And they were like, we need to get going right away. So I'm like, great. Because when I, when I do that, like, I really try to put client first. I clear out time. I, I carve out time here and there to get this thing done. So I hit them up like in the next couple of days. I went through their QuickBooks file. I, I saw what I had to do. And they're like, well, we're gonna, we have a, another discussion next week. Okay, cool. So that next week happens. Where are we at? Uh, we pushed that meeting off another week. So I went like three words, like three weeks out now. And I, I'm like, don't dick around with my time because I'm putting you first right now. You know, that's, that's kind of how, how I, how I felt. So uh, I, I hit them up again. Uh, well, we're not sure yet. We're going to, we don't know when we're going to, and I'm like, look, uh, respectfully, I withdraw my company's name for, from consideration. I wish you the best with, you know, outsourcing this work. And that was it. And 
So I was like, I, I wasn't, I was more pissed that, that they kind of just dragged us along for it. Like, I don't, I don't care one way or the other, but I'm like rearranging resources to make sure I can do this work. And so the next day, I get a call from the guy that I was working on for a year saying, look, I have to get this done. When can you start? And that was a twenty. That was a twenty thousand dollar project. Mm -hmm. Right. So that and that other one was probably maybe three thousand a year. So so I have the I have the twenty thousand dollar project. I have his bookkeeping for he has four the, the new one. I have the twenty thousand dollar project. I have uh, bookkeeping and tax work for four S corporations mm. that he's running. So it it's it just worked out. So that twenty grand doesn't include the future work. It's just to get him caught up where he needs to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Yeah, yeah. I love that because like I, I've definitely encountered that in my life where you know you'll be working with a potential client you'll be trying to you know close like close the client but just mm -hmm. really help this client get to where they said that they needed to get to and things just don't align up right and yeah. then, like as soon as you you know you kind of just drop the restriction or the contraction with the with anything that you have going on it seems that's when everything abundantly just yeah. starts coming to you like as soon as you kind of just release like yeah. listen, i'm just gonna give value i'm just gonna let that it show up how it shows mm -hmm. up and then it's yeah. like right when you're like i'm done like this is not you know um you guys have been having been for them and like i mm -hmm. i withdraw consideration the very yeah. next day you just randomly like do you think that that's a coincidence <laughs> like it just I, randomly. I, I did until i was like <laughs> wait a minute i just got rid of something and then he called yeah so that i i just I think stuff like that happens. It's got to be a little real. It's got to be. It's not all like woo woo stuff. It has to be real a little bit. You know what I mean? So. Okay. Okay. I love it. I love it. All right. So yeah. let's talk about. Okay. So it seems like you actually went down a different route because, like, in the program, obviously we talk about lateral partnerships. Uh, we talk about building relationships with people that could um, be a source of revenue for you, a mutual mm -hmm. source of revenue. So yeah. not only. Um, the financial planner has been a great source of um, revenue and client generation for you, but you also referring clients to them for financial planning and it being like a symbiotic mm -hmm. relationship. Yeah. I firmly believe that anybody can build a six figure business just having the right lateral partners and you've kind of proven that whole concept. So yeah. at this moment for you, is it more so, do you have the capacity to work with more lateral partners? Um, they might not be financial planners per se. They might be in under uh, other industries. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what, yeah. Well, I, I, I won't work with any more financial planners because I have a loyalty to those guys. Like right. they've just, they're, they're, I, like I said, I really like them. I really like their value uh, proposal. And I, I'm, I think they're just, they're good humans. That, that's really important to me. Um, but yeah, my goal right now, and, and so, you know, we'll talk about it. If you want to, I'll jump real quick to the numbers right now where 2020 looks, right? So I, I, I think I did the numbers right now. I'm at, I'll have between 155 and 180 in total mm -hmm. revenue with tax. That's tax. That's, you know, it's, that's right now. That's right? amazing. Um, and I, I'm going to be honest. I haven't done, I haven't done any reach out. I haven't done any reach out now, so, but I want to get, I, I really, I, I have to, I have to do that because I don't want to be dependent on one source. You know, like I want to have, I, I, now that I'm super focused on what I'm doing, I want to really start marketing that piece out. It just took me, it just, it just took me a while to get to this point mentally to be okay with just walking away from all the other nonsense, you know, all the other noise. It was just, it, it just took me a while. Right. Okay. So, so what I, for people that are like, what did he just say? So the Mike, what Mike just said, like he hasn't been focusing on the marketing strategy per se, um, as far as, you know, the hunting strategy, connecting with your ideal clients, getting, mm -hmm. getting them on the strategy session, then walking through the, the script to onboard them yep. as a client. But you said something that I loved in the beginning, you were like, um, this company, your lateral partner, you connected with them from LinkedIn, right? Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, you can understand the power of social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, just connecting yeah. the right people could be life changing for you. So I love, I, so that's just like, for me, like that's just confirmation that mm -hmm. yeah. you, know, you can find, you can, if you can have that type of relationship from LinkedIn, you can have several more additional fruitful relationships from yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah. So, so lateral partner wise, I, I want to, I'm going to start hitting up uh, business attorneys uh, and other CPAs, because I don't want their, I don't want to do their work. I'm not trying to steal their work, but I want to be, you know, I have these other kind of services that I do, these like tax credit services. Those things I want to market towards 
the professionals to say, hey, I know you have these clients. I'm not trying to steal your tax or your, your accounting work, but are you, are you helping them maximize WOTC or maximize R&D credit, cost segregation, that kind of thing? Um, and what I like is it doesn't, it's not too far out of the loop of, uh, as far as, it's not too different than my other focus of accounting for construction and real estate. Like uh, the fact that I'm, I am focusing on that niche shouldn't have, it shouldn't be a threat to these other companies, other CPAs, other tax, uh, right. tax accounts or business attorneys. Right. Got you. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. So I would say, so I think we got a really good, I, you know, a really good idea of where you've been at. You were like, you know, 60,000 ish was kind of where mentally you were kind of um, yeah. just um, producing at. And then after like a mindset shift and really just understanding, like just breaking any limiting beliefs, now you're on track to hit almost 200 K for 2020, which is exciting mm -hmm. So for you. Like what does like the next, what does outside of that those engagements what does 2020 look like for you like what's your trajectory as far as how you want your business to look next year um i should probably be close to 300 within 18 months so i have to i have to figure out i have to figure out uh logistically how to get that done like i'm gonna have to bring on people i'm already i i have an idea how i'm gonna handle tax season um and there's another tax season, by the way. Like, how uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have people entering, and I'm gonna be almost strictly reviewing instead okay. of yeah. Like, I, well, I might I might handle more the tap the business stuff, but all the individuals I'm gonna have that enter, and then uh, I'll just review because I, I don't think it's sufficient for me to be, you know, key punching tax returns in. Right. right. Um, but I have to uh, I, I I have to get that, and then I have to I have to set up the systems to handle the work as it comes on because we have. That's another one I just I forgot to tell you about. There's a uh, a real estate group that we're working with hmm. that has they're putting together. I don't want to get too too detail about what they're doing, but they're putting together a huge project as well that they want us to handle the accounting for. So that's I don't even know I don't even know what the numbers on that are, and that's gonna that's gonna hit within the next couple months. Right. But um, we have another I have another outsourced CFO engagement that's that could happen maybe May or June of next year that could be bigger than what I have now. Right. So I mean, it's just, uh, right now it's just making sure I can handle the work. It's not a matter of, is the work out there? You know, is, am I gonna be able to, to you know, feed my dogs? It's a matter of, you know, can I get them a 200 acre, fen you know, fenced in yard to run it? You know, that, <laughs> and, and so, so um, that's a, it's a beautiful thing. And believe, I'm not a bra I don't, I'm not bragging. I'm just like, if you, if you could see, if you saw me a year ago and what I was thinking the future looked like, Versus now, it's just, it's night and day. It's just yeah. really night and day. Yeah. You. Okay, so last couple of questions. So what would you say to someone, you know, they're considering joining, they're like, you know, I really don't know um, if this is right for me. What what would you say to that person? It, it, the only way it's not right for you is if you're, you don't want to grow your business. You don't want freedom. You want to be just, you know, throwing a fishing line out the door every, you know, 35 seconds looking for a client. If, if you want a systematic approach to building your business and you want, you want to be surrounded by people that actually see what the potential is out there, join. Got you. Got you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you for sharing sure. the story. I know it's going to help a lot of people, especially those that are really interested in CFO. They're interested in more higher ticket clients, like, like the ones that you've been able to lock in. Yeah. Um, and then those strategic partnerships that you've been able mm -hmm. to do. I think this is going to help a lot of people um, just to see the possibility and that it can happen for them too. Cool. So awesome. Thank you. Sure. Awesome. All right. Have a good one.